outlasting the competition and the elements to win for the first time aboard a big bike in Sacramento. Today, Carmichael returns to go for a couple of other historic feats. RC tries to keep the streak alive, as in going two more 250 motos without a loss. And there's Jeremy McGrath's all-time wins record that Carmichael now sits one victory away from time. The 35th annual Hangtown Classic awaits more history. Welcome to Northern California for the 35th annual Hangtown Classic from Hangtown Raceway. These are the AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championships. And hello once again, everybody. Todd Harris along with the champ David Bailey and Cameron Steele. On a picture-perfect day, the wind is out, but so are the fans. And a lot of people turning out this week, David, to see if Ricky Carmichael can continue. There are a handful of riders that can stop him. Kevin Windham looks good once again, but so far, Ricky's still the man. Well, 88 is the number right now. Ricky Carmichael looking to get to 89, and that would put him in a tie with Jeremy McGrath. We asked him the importance of that number. A goal, a personal goal of mine, to be the all-time winning rider in, in the sport. And, uh, you know, I'm just uh, really happy about it. Hopefully I can pull it off. You know, I thought that I could do it in Supercross, and it didn't work out. So uh, now we're outdoors, and I'm trying to do it. So uh, I can tie it this weekend, and that would be awesome. Definitely awesome. So as Carmichael goes for 89, Kevin Windham tries to pick up the pieces last week. This was the action at Glen Helen. Just everything kind of fell apart for him right there, David. Well, I was glad that he didn't get hurt during that crash. I mean, he just came to a complete stop right there. And he's tested a lot. I mean, he's been fast there, but now we know he's fast at the races. I kind of knew going into the season I had, had the speed because uh, he and I had been doing some testing together. And, uh, you know, everything's working well. My bike, factory connection, Honda, No Fear, Lee Dungaree jeans, all the guys came together to really make this thing work, make an atmosphere that works for me. And, you know, it's all up to me now. Everything's everything's uh, ready behind the scenes. I just got to go out there and ride 35 minutes consistent. And Ezra Lust looking to get back on track. Had a good run in one of the motos last week. What do you think the situation with him as well as Sebastian Tortelli? Well, I think they're they're close. The speed is there. It's just it's all got to come together in the same day. The start has to be there. The, the focus has to be there. And, you know, Chad Reed is another one. He, he snuggled right up to Ricky Carmichael in second place. He did a flip-flop of what was happening in Supercross, but he will figure it out. Here is the incident that really caught everyone's attention. Sean Hamlin and didn't catch it for the right reasons. A brutal accident through there. And this is the place where Hamlin really started it all. Let's send it down to Cameron Steele. Well, last year at Hangtown, the number 33 Sobe Suzuki bike was actually the privateer Suzuki bike number 99 of Sean Hamlin. He had a nasty get off at Glen Helen, but this race last year is where he did battle with some of the best riders in the world, including Ricky Carmichael, who made a name for himself. And then Roger DeCoster, after Travis Pastrana got hurt, pulled him into the semi. Earlier, I talked to Sean about how he was feeling for this event. Actually, 100%. You know, I, uh, I rode a lot this week with uh, Sebastian and Rick Johnson, and uh, I feel good. I feel comfortable, and uh, I'm ready to win. So we'll see if Sean Hamlin can pull it off as we take a look at Mike LaRocco and our Suzuki starting grid here for the 35th annual Hangtown Classic. David, your thoughts as we get ready to start moto number one. Well, it's, it's all up to Carmichael to continue his streak, but there's so much competition in this class now. And then you've got the addition of Kevin Windham this year and also Chad Reed. I think he's just going to try to be smart like he was last week and let the wins just sort of come to him. He won't be impatient in the beginning of the race. He's thinking about getting another championship. Well, the problem here is all those riders who were unhealthy during the Supercross season are healthy now. So as you look at the Suzuki starting grid, all the talent is there on the line, and this is a big one. It's the 35th annual Hangtown Classic from Sacramento, California, and they are away. Great start for Kevin Windham again. Back out front, Nathan Ramsey had a good start going up the inside as well. Nathan Ramsey's number 25 on board the Honda, and here they come making yet another turn, and they're starting to spread out already, David. The four strokes way out in front. 
I'll tell you what, it's going to be a long season for guys like Carmichael and Reed on those 250s. I know they can get pretty good starts, but with Kevin Wyndham getting these starts and riding as fast as he has been these first two rounds, and I don't know if they're going to be able to catch back up to that guy every week. There's Ricky, not too bad, but he's got a lot of riders to move around before he can get in touch with Kevin Wyndham, and by that time, Kevin may be gone. Ricky Carmichael currently sitting in sixth place, number four, the Honda, but right now your leader, number 14, that is Kevin Wyndham on the Factory Connection Honda. We saw this last week at Glen Helen, California. Here's a guy who has taken a hiatus from the sport. Not completely, he's done a little bit of training, but he comes back, David, he hasn't missed a beat. He's flying. Everything he's doing is opening lap. When they took that slow lap and looked at the racetrack, he took a good look because he's he's hitting his lines. He didn't over jump the big double at the top. He got right into the rut he wanted, back on the power. And you know, clean track. He's he's got a good vision. He can take the lines he wants. And while Ricky's got to deal with traffic and getting roosted and having to pull tear offs in places. It's tough work coming from behind. Carmichael, number four, gets past number 11. Ezra aboard the Kawasaki. He'll now go to work on number 27, Nick Way on the Yamaha. Trying to find a line. You, you don't always get to ride the best lines you want. Mike Gossler looking on, trying to figure out what he's going to put on the board for Carmichael when he comes around. But you got to take a, a line that you want. The guy in front of you is taking it, and it ruins your rhythm. You get roosted, and all the time you're trying to figure out a way to get to the front. The leader is checking out, and that's when you start to get a little nervous. You'll see Ricky a lot of times. He'll go off a jump and look over to see who the leader is and just what kind of progress he's making. So right now it's the two Hondas out in front, Kevin Windham and Larry Ward going one and two. Ricky Carmichael currently sitting in sixth place, cannot get around Nick Way right now. And in front of Nick Way, there's more talent, including Sean Hamlin. See Ricky tripling into that corner, a beautiful move. What that does is besides it, it's a lot faster. You get into the corner, and it puts you on the inside going into that next corner there. So he had that pass, pass made, no problem. That's where Ricky and Ron Cotta got together last year. That all got ended right here in this corner, and Ricky makes another nice block pass. So he's up two more spots, but you can see him reaching up to clear his vision. Every time you let go of those handlebars, you can't be going as fast as you would if you were hanging on with both hands. Carmichael, number four, gets past 46. Damian Plot, Plot staying on the back of Ricky Carmichael, knowing that if he can keep that pace, good things could happen. In front of Carmichael is Sean Hamlin, and then way out in front is Kevin Wyndham. And you make a good point. This track is very dirty, very ruddy. He's not getting roosted. Speaking of Kevin Wyndham, he's out in front. He's got clean track. Meanwhile, Ricky's having to really go to work. You know, I think he's starting to get just a little bit nervous, too. I'm seeing a lot more aggression in him right now, trying to attack and get up into second place as fast as he can. As you can see Larry Ward right there running in second, and Kevin Windham's already out of sight. 33 is Sean Hamlin. Carmichael goes past him, so Ricky Carmichael, number four, now sits in third place here in moto number one at the Hangtown Classic. In front of him is Larry Ward, and in front of him is Kevin Windham. So the folks at Honda have to be happy right now as they go one, two, and three here in the 250 moto one. Well, I think what Ricky realizes with Kevin is that, you know, Kevin is the, the kind of rider that can win these races. With with a lot of the other guys, I think Ricky understands that it, even if they had a bit of a lead at this point in the race, he's like, I'll catch that guy later. But with Kevin, man, he, he could be gone. Ricky's really got to honor that challenge and get up there and, and race him and keep him from getting too much confidence. It's early in the series. If Kevin keeps doing this to Ricky, Sooner or later, he's going to get these wins, get these overalls, and the momentum's going to shift. Larry Ward currently sits in second place, the youngster from Florence, South Carolina. He's been around for a long time. We can call him the youngster. And Ricky Carmichael right there. You see Ward taking a look over his shoulder. Interesting note, the last person to beat Ricky Carmichael in the Outdoor Nationals, David Bailey. Kevin Windham. Your running order, Windham, Ward, and Carmichael back after this. dependable longest lasting trucks on the road and by Honda the company that defines performance in motorcycles ATVs and scooters 
we are back to the 35th annual Hangtown Classic, Sacramento, California, the AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championships. Todd Harris along with David Bailey and Cameron Steele, your leader in moto number one of the 250 class continues to be Kevin Windham. And he just, after that little step down after the mechanics area, he just railed that right-hand berm. There's a good look at the gap. Back to Larry Ward, who's still holding off Ricky Carmichael until just then. You jinxed him. It almost looked like Larry didn't want to be any part of that. He's like, I'm going to go wide right here. You go ahead and go left, and I'm going to get out of this fight because I don't want to go that fast. And a fight it should be. Ricky Carmichael hanging in the balance is his consecutive streak of wins on the outdoor circuit. Kevin Windham, the last man to beat Carmichael, looking to do it again. And Carmichael riding with a lot of determination. We've seen this before, especially in the Supercross arena. But Kevin Windham is no slouch and he has got a sizable lead over Carmichael right now. Well, for all the Kevin Windham fans out there, his lead is growing. His lap times are a little bit faster, about a second, second and a half than Ricky Carmichael. And even when Ricky puts together a lap and, and Kevin has a little trouble, he's still either the same or about a half a second faster. So now that Ricky's into second, he's got no riders in his way, nothing to keep him from catching Kevin able to reel him in. That's surprising me a little bit right now, because looking at Ricky, man, it doesn't look like he can go any faster than he's he can do to reel him. It's not happening. Chad Reed sits in fifth place right now in front of him. Sean Hamlin, Larry Ward, among others. Ricky Carmichael, though, trying to track down Kevin Windham as the rest of the pack comes through. And Chad Reed has not quite figured out this track. The lap times aren't quite there. Meanwhile, in front of him, the battle for third rages on. Larry Ward on the left, number 10. And next to him is Sean Hamlin, number 33. There's Carmichael going by. You can just... Listen to the throttle. Carmichael pinned going by. Hamlin sounding a, a lot like him on that two-stroke. Nice pass. Rails the outside, puts him on the inside going to this section. And Hamlin, this is where he caught fire last year. It's also where Pastrana went down, broke his wrist. That opened up his uh, bike over at Suzuki. They rolled the dice, said, well, let's give it to Sean. And, and uh, he proved that that was a good idea. Sean Hamlin right behind Ricky Carmichael in third, about four seconds back. And here comes Chad Reed. Reed making quick work of Larry Ward. He goes into fourth place. So Chad Reed, whose lap times early on weren't quite there, is starting to figure this thing out. What do you see of Chad Reed the rest of the season? Well, I believe Chad's going to just do the same thing he did in Supercross. He's going to get better and better as the season continues. There's a little Supercross section. He's got that pretty wired. But he'll be around. He'll be, he'll be really knocking on the door looking for wins here pretty soon. Meanwhile, Tim. Ferry has now moved into fifth place. And with that, let's check in with Cameron Steele. Well, Steve, Timmy's been moving up rapidly. What happened on the start? He got an all right jump, but Wyndham done a better jump and then moved over on Timmy a little bit. No big deal, just Wyndham got ahead. What, has he been doing something different training? I mean, is he feeling this outdoor series? He's just better outdoors than indoors, that's all. And the bike's really good for the outdoors motocross, so it suits him. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, guys. <laughs> So we'll keep our eye on the red dog, Timmy Ferry, as he moves up a position. Larry Ward dropping back rather quickly. The Yamaha starting to assert themselves here, David, at Hangtown. Now they got a strong team. Villeman, though, I think he had a problem. Of, I'm not sure what went wrong, but it looks like he's dropped out of the race. Not going to get any points this time. Look at Ferry up the inside. Beautiful. Tim little Ferry, bit, number little. 15, getting past his teammate. That's a, a touch heavier bike, the four-stroke, and he just muscled his way in and finessed it in there to the inside of Chad, which surprised me. I thought Chad would have that. They're leaning on Sean Hamlin now. He's going to feel the pressure, but no pressure for Kevin. He is gone. He's like driving out in Centerville, Mississippi. This guy has a pilot's license. He is absolutely flying today, no pun intended. And for Kevin Wyndham fans, as you pointed out, this is a great sight. Ricky Carmichael, he's started taking a look to his right, saying, Wyndham is that far ahead of me? Carmichael sitting in second place right now, so Honda goes one and two. Ricky Carmichael, though, it looks like the streak may come to an end. Yeah, that moto win streak is in jeopardy. He's not that far ahead of this pack. So, I, it's like I said, it's the start. I think Ricky realizes this year is a little bit closer to him. There's a lot more guys out there. Fonseca moving up to the 250 class. You know, a, a pretty healthy Nathan Ramsey. He missed the whole last year season pretty much after right. a crash at Glen Helen. So I think Ricky's uh, he's not going to be too concerned with winning all the motos. He's going to be concerned with keeping that points lead and hopefully getting a lot of overalls. Ernesto Fonseca, number 24, trying to hold off number 25, Nathan Ramsey. Ramsey cannot close the deal. They are racing side by side. Look 
Kevin Fonseca trying to find a way to hold him off. And in the end, it looks like Ramsey's going to get the line as they make this right-hand turn and head back out. I thought Fonseca might have it there where he could jump down to the outside and pinch him off going to the next left. But Ramsey is just on it and starting to feel a little bit better. That femur that he broke back... Oh, I don't remember how long it's been now. It seems like it's been a long time, but that's also what happened to Kevin Wyndham. He broke a femur last year, and he's doing pretty good. It just takes a while. I think uh, Ramsey just needs a little bit more time. Well, the powers that be continue to marvel at Kevin Wyndham. He is your leader. We'll be back after this. Several days of rain drenched the OHV park in Sacramento, making conditions for the 1991 250 National difficult to say the least. It was a free-for-all off the start as the nasty conditions cut this two-moto format to one moto, winner takes all. Number seven, Jeff Matasevich held the early lead, but would give up his position to number eight, Jean-Michel Bale. Number six, Mike LaRocco beat the weather and placed his Suzuki third. Up front, Bale seemed in control and cruising towards a win, but number 35, John Dowd, a privateer from the Northeast, came up through the pack to challenge the Frenchman. Bale almost stalls and gives John Dowd the opportunity of a lifetime as he leads the national. The privateer takes control from that point on and cruises into his first professional win. Back to the 35th annual Hangtown Classic. This is moto number one, and that is your leader, number 14, Kevin Windham. Smooth as silk. Not seeing any mistakes. If you, if you, when you look at him coming through that section, it, it looks like, no, we've already seen that shot before. No, that's how Kevin goes through there. He's, he's so consistent. He goes through the same every single time. Ricky went through there. Actually looked a little bit better. He just sounds more aggressive, though, on a 250. Chad Reed's starting to make some progress. Tim Ferry has moved into third. Hamblin sits in fourth, Reed in fifth, but Kevin Windham is the man of the hour and the day. This is moto number one, and Windham is absolutely running away with it. Stopping the streak of Ricky Carmichael. Kevin Windham, as David pointed out, silky smooth through every section. No mishaps this week like there were last week in Glen Helen. And I think serving notice that Kevin Windham is certainly here to stay. Whole lot of Honda shirts out there waving Kevin on. I don't, I don't remember seeing that many of them waving Ricky on. So uh, they're, everybody over at the Honda camp is really happy to see Kevin's rebound. There's Mike LaRocco right there, battling with Sean Hamlin, the battle for fifth place. LaRocco number five, David, it's good to see him up and healthy. Yeah, coming off a of shoulder surgery into this outdoor season, it was pretty tough to, uh, you know, really do much at Glen Helen. It's one of the rougher tracks, longer lap times, makes the pass on Hamlin. He made a mistake, made it even easier, but Mike's going to get stronger throughout this series. And, Interesting to see that he switched back to the 250. Last year he was riding the 450 outdoors and this time decided, hey, back to the two-stroke. Let's check in with Cameron Steele. Well, definitely a better performance going on right now than last week. Seems like Mike's on the gas, catching up to Hamlin. What was the story? Uh, just last week, he didn't have, only rode about 10 days before the national after his shoulder, shoulder surgery, so just more track time. He's riding better every day we go out. What percentage of Mike Larocco do we have? Health-wise, he's probably close to 100%. Just you now, shoulders perfect. Um, just timing and just getting back in the flow, you know. Just needs a little more seat time. Exactly, that's it. This this model's battling like that's good for him. Thank you. All right. Yeah, he'll just be in a situation here where he just races his way back into shape and all the stuff during the week is just filler. The only time he's really going to be able to make any kind of gain is when they have a week off after the Mount Morris round and then a couple other breaks during the season where he can actually have a few weeks to train. That's the first time I've seen Kevin take a different line to there. After he just said, well, every lap looks the same, he decides with the big lead he's got now, he doesn't have to be quite as precise everywhere, and he might be trying to figure out some stuff for the second moto, jump that double, go wide instead of breaking through those big breaking bumps, and then make a nice pivot on the outside and, and uh, have a lot more options on the exit. This is Ricky Carmichael finally coming into view, and this is something we haven't seen in a long time. Meanwhile, David Villeman is out of the race. We'll have to find out exactly what happened to him. And we've got a great battle for 14th. Number 24 is Ernesto Fonseca on the Kawasaki 17, Robbie Raynard. Good to see Raynard up there. Not as far up there as he really can ride. I've seen him do a lot better, but yeah, it's going to take him a little while. He was off for quite a long time, and he's just going to need to get back into the racing mode. And 
There's certain races and certain tracks where he can battle for the lead. So Raynard gets 14th. Meanwhile, your leader continues to be Kevin Windham. And prior to this race, we talked to him about the streak of Ricky Carmichael. Absolutely. You know, for, for a year and a half, I set off a, a watch. You know, in the first couple of nationals, I was interested. And then after a while, it just was like I didn't even really have to call because I, I could kind of see what was going to happen. And, and he had the motivation and, and the, uh, the wave that he was riding that just pushed him to the top. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say I, I, I uh, almost almost beat him at the first moto, uh, first moto and it would have been great to, to do that but uh, you know all that's water under the bridge and me being the last guy to beat him and me almost beating him at Glen Helen or having the speed all, all that doesn't really matter I just want to be the next guy to beat him and to uh, in that streak. I like it well he's on pace to do just that Kevin Windham getting cheers from the red shirts as he takes a look over and sees just how big his lead over Ricky Carmichael and I do believe the streak has come to an end. So the man who last beat Ricky Carmichael does the job again. Your winner, moto number one at the Hangtown Classic in the 250 class. Hard to say. We're so used to saying Ricky Carmichael. But your winner, Kevin Windham. Ricky Carmichael will take second. Ricky kind of stunned like, huh, so where do I go? Usually I win and I go over there. <laughs> This is just uh, it's unbelievable. The whole crowd here is just going, the biggest crowd I've ever seen, too. They're going, they just saw something amazing. Meanwhile, with one turn to go, it's Nick Way battling for eighth, trying to hold off John Dowd. He will do that, so Way will pick up eighth. John Dowd will have to settle for ninth. But for number 14, Kevin Windham, it is mission complete. He picks up the victory and stops the streak of Ricky Carmichael. When we come back, we'll talk with Kevin Windham. Plus, he'll take us outside the lines. Hi, I'm Kevin Windham, and this is my buddy Amber, and uh, welcome to the country. We're going to show you all my place today. Come on, Amber. And these are uh, seven of the eight amateur championships I won from the Red Limbs, and uh, the eighth one's being fixed now, but... The thing about my house now that I don't really like is I got trophies scattered everywhere. And one day when I retire, I hope to uh, bring them all together in one big trophy room. Oh, oh with them, with a smooth move. And uh, now we're in the living room area. Here's wonderful wife Dottie, hanging out for the day. When we're at home, this is where we do most of our lounging around. I call that bed most of the time. I kind of lounge around the ladies' boy. But throughout our whole house, we have trophies scattered all throughout. Uh, here's some across the mantle, and uh, we got the ones here from uh, Bampton, uh, Broom Tioga Sports Center. These are, I think, my favorite trophies because they've been hand carved and things. But as far as the uh, race wins themselves, they're just like any other one. They're all special to me. And uh, in my backyard here, this is my airplane hangar. It is uh, 7,200 square feet. That's where we keep all the duty. Come check it out. And uh, inside here, we got one of my uh, one of my favorite little knocker on the pasture airplanes. This is a 1939 uh, Piper J3 Cub. And uh, over here, it's kind of a twin, but it's actually a lot uh, different of an airplane. This is a 1997 Husky. And uh, it's kind of what I like to do for fun around here. Go flying a lot. And, uh, kind of venture around, you know. Every time you take off, you kind of leave what's on the ground behind, and it's a whole different world up there, you know. If you can get up top here, it's, uh, this is where my lights are that I, I have my uh, New Year's party. And we use this kind of for our dance floor. And a uh, nice little action on both sides are, are the championship bikes that I won. Uh, I believe it was in 96 and 97. I uh, won my championship. And then you got the little bitty old tyke in the back. That's my first bike that I ever rode, that was a uh, Suzuki JR50. This right here is probably one of my favorite just because of what it means to me. This, this is uh, the trophy that I got, the first place trophy from uh, Bud's Creek when I did the USGP. And, uh, you know, I got this 
just the show part, but with my bonus check, I got just the show part. All right, glad y'all can make it down here to my house in Centerville. Uh, you guys need to come to this area and check out some tracking trails. We're building the Flying W. It's uh, maybe a thousand acres of trail riding. And other than that, that's about all I got to offer. I'm going flying. We'll see y'all. Kevin Windham takes to the skies, and now he's speaking with Ricky Carmichael, the man whose streak he has now broken at the 35th annual Hangtown Classic. As we look at the Honda official results, it's Windham, Carmichael, Ferry, Chad Reed, and Mike LaRocco, the top five. Sean Hamlin slides back to seven, and there you see John Dowd finishing in ninth. Plus, Ramsey and Fonseca go 11, 12, and 13, and Plots and Ward 16 and 17. Let's go to Cameron. Well, Kevin, I was talking to your mechanic, and he said, well, maybe he's kryptonite to Ricky. I mean, maybe he found a way to spoil uh, Superman's run. Well, you know, I mean, I, we got to take our hats off to Ricky. That was one hell of a run uh, from last year and even the first two modes of this year. But I tell you what, it feels great. You know, the whole time I was out there, I was just trying to keep it cool. I was thinking, man, it's been a long time since someone beat Ricky. I believe that's the first win the, the Honda 450s had, and, uh, you know, it's, it's great to put it up here. Yeah, At Glen Helen, did you feel a little bit nervous or you weren't sure what was going to happen? Then after that, you're like, hey, I can do this. Well, I've been testing with Ricky, so I always thought that I could do it. But at the same time, it's been a year and a half since I've done this stuff. And it's a little, it's a little bit different when you're leaving the gate. And, you know, you got the crowd and you got guys like Ricky and Timmy and all the other guys I hear that are uh, running for the same place I'm trying to get. I know the moto's just over, but do you think at all about a streak of your own starting right here? Oh, that's way too early, and Ricky's way too tough of a competitor. Yeah, I'm just glad to get that first one under my Belt. We're not going to change anything, man. My factory connection, Honda, no fear, Lee Dungaree jeans bike is just doing incredible. And I got to thank Michelin tires, the right helmets, spy goggles, and Alpine Starbucks. Awesome job, Kevin. Thanks. Thanks a lot. As we take a look at upcoming dates, Southwick, Massachusetts on the 9th, Bud's Creek on the 16th, and we go to Michigan on July 7th. Well, Ricky Carmichael's streak is up, but the overall wins is still possible. He's down with Cameron. Well, Ricky, first up, the streak is over. It's been about a year, nine months since you lost a 250 outdoor moto. Relieved a little bit, maybe? Uh, it's a, you know, I haven't been letting it bother me, but uh, Kevin rode a good race. He deserves it. And, uh, you know, I gave up a lot on the start. And uh, he was right putting in some good laps, and I could just couldn't catch him. So, uh, you know, it was good for him. And, uh, you know, I just want to uh, be there at the end of the series. But, uh, you know, a little bummer with the streaks over. But, hey, man, you, you know, all good things must come to an end. And uh, it was a fun ride, definitely. It was an awesome ride, awesome to watch. I want to ask you, all this time, all these different riders trying to beat you, are you surprised it's the same guy that beat you last time, Kevin Windham? Uh, no, nah, Kevin's a great rider. And, uh, yeah, I can't, you know, for taking a year and a half off, the other guys, you know, I thought it would be someone else. But, uh you know, Kevin's a great rider. I've been racing him ever since I was a little kid, and uh, it's good to have Honda 1-2 up there and uh, do my best to get up front the next moto. i got to get a better start. I know the start wasn't great for you. Anything else you're going to need to do to compensate, or was it all start? No, you know, I think that Kevin's the kind of guy you can't let him get away, and uh, that's exactly what I did. We're looking forward to an awesome shootout in moto number two. Uh, it'll be a good one. Yeah, I mean, I'm almost excited that Kevin won, you know, because he's been off for a while, but also, too, you know, somebody finally beat, uh, you know, Ricky's streak that he had going, and, you know, that's good momentum for everybody else, you know, it gives everybody else a little bit of hope, and uh, let's get out there and get some better starts. Moto number two should as the 35th annual Hangtown Classic continues. Right now, it's time for the Racer X Pit Pass. They don't want to see firemen. They want to see racers. see the racers. <laughs> Number two, but straight ahead, Cameron gets a little help, so it really is a Suzuki fast lap when we return. Everybody's riding and training together. And
Well, boys and girls, it's time for the Sobe Suzuki Fast Lap. Check it out. Travis Pastrana is a race. So I got Lee McComb over here wrenching on my bike. Things are cool. But unfortunately, I couldn't make it for Saturday, so I couldn't do the medium lap. But that's the way I like to call it. I don't have my No Fear gear on. This time, we put on multi-time national champion Ricky Johnson. Well, that's maybe why we brought the heat out with Lee. Hey, let's check in and see how Ricky liked the track. As you come over the finish line, you got a sharp left-hand corner, 90 degree. You got to start setting up early because you got a lot of elevation change and a lot of dirt and terrain change. So set up early, cut the corners, and keep your drive all the way to the top of the hill. You get one moment to rest as a fast champion. You got to get really ready for this. Try not to over jump it, which I do. Take it all the way down to the outside line. Now you got a sharp little uphill. You don't want to gain too much speed because it flattens off at the top. You need to keep a nice roll around the corner, get your drive as you come down the hill. Stay out of the roost. In this position, I'm on the outside just trying to keep a little speed going, but I'm getting ready. What I'm thinking about the most is the big double at the top of the hill. I look over to the inside, come over to the top of this, get a good drive, and now I'm praying, hoping, because either I'm going to come short or... And long. Thank God for that berm. Get a good run. Coming down this, get back on the ground. You got a nice little double jump. The pros are doing a triple. As you go through the section of sand rhythms, you can't really do it like a supercross jump. You have to hit pretty much every one. Come around, do a tabletop, then into a technical sandy left-hand long sweeper corner with some very peaky jumps. Then into a sharp, very sharp left-hander with a lot of deep ruts. You gotta keep yourself going. You're always setting up for the next section. Here's a double apex. I come in, pivot off, shoot across the inside, stays nice and smooth, pivot once again. Now I'm setting myself up for the uphill. As I turn left, I get a good run on this rider. Nice drive going up the hill. This is one of the fun little double jumps as you come down the hill. You get a good drive, third gear, mid, little blip. You're in the air. Come off, double, where the pros are tripling. Now, probably the most stadium section of the track, a little rhythm section that I just kind of bounce back and forth. And because I am the cameraman, I get to go an extra lap. And that's your Sobe Suzuki Fast Lap here at Hangtown. And David, that may be the first time we've ever had anyone pass a rider on the Sobe <laughs> Suzuki Fast I think lap. you're right. I, I, Antonez did a pretty good job last year, but we're getting faster. And that's a great idea to have all the Suzuki guys do that at some point or another. We are almost set for the second moto here at the 35th annual Hangtown Classic. Todd Harris along with David Bailey and Cameron Steele. The question is, can Ricky Carmichael start a new streak? Absolutely. He's the guy that can do it. He seemed pretty motivated in that winter interview at the end. He's like, oh, yeah, second moto's going to be a fight. There's your Suzuki starting grid. Wyndham atop the board. He was the winner in moto number one. Nathan Ramsey, Ernesto Fonseca, and the rest of the crew. And remember, folks, 30 minutes plus two. So it is a grueling, grueling race. Let's talk about the course, first of all, before they let him go. The 30 board is sideways. We'll get to that in just a minute. 40 guys off the line. They're all heading for that first right-hand turn. Wyndham again. Unbelievable. He is he's gotten every start, pretty much. Villeman just edged him out at Glen Helen. Carmichael, a much better start this time. And Reed, I talked about Reed and Carmichael going, right. these guys are going to hope for, they're going to be wanting to ride 450s pretty soon. Not if they get starts like this. Chad Reed in second place, number 22 behind him in third, number four, Ricky Carmichael. But your leader, number 14, is Kevin Windham, the man who picked up the victory and stopped the streak of Ricky Carmichael in moto number one here at the Hangtown Classic is at it again. And Windham, you, you can't say he's a revelation because he just went away for a year and a half, but he came back so fresh and so crisp and on the rivet. This kid is amazing. Well, I think what everyone's so happy about is that we all knew he could come back and do this. But the chances of and they were like, yeah, that's kind of wishful thinking. He's actually doing it, and that's what's making it so cool. Reed right there poking the nose into the inside. Kevin, a lot of confidence to go out wide like that and just... ...figure out what he's doing so doggone fast, and this could change the whole deal. It let This could be the the race where Chad Reed starts to find his groove. And I think your comments about Chad Reed were dead on. It just took him a few races to kind of get a feel of this outdoor. Remember, he came right off the Supercross series with the battle of Ricky Carmichael and went right to the outdoor. And look at Carmichael coming in. So it's a three-way battle. Reed to the outside. Can't get by Wyndham. Wyndham maintains first. Reed and second. Ricky Carmichael right on the back door. Beautiful. The fastest three riders on the planet right now. Reed. 
Unbelievable. Chad Reed picks off Kevin Windham in a very unlikely spot. So Chad Reed is the new leader here in moto number two. Kevin Windham in second and Ricky Carmichael sitting in third. And look at him go. Kevin Windham now starting to reel him back in. Not liking that second place position. Look at Windham all over the place, but Chad Reed able to hold him off. Not giving up, though. I like the fact that Kevin's in there fighting. He's got the line here. Windham on the inside, pegs it, gets past him, and goes down. Kevin Windham just washes out. Oh, uh, when you fall in the early lap, there goes everybody. It's still the first lap. And the bike stalls. Yeah, it didn't look like he started it right up, though. He was lucky there. It didn't look like he bent anything on the bike. It was just uh, the water the track right there. You go into the shade. That part didn't dry as much. Look at Kevin's line. Beautiful. Right back to the lead. I like to see that he's fighting. But the front end, as soon as he goes into the shadows, he's going to lose it. He goes down. And watch how close Reed comes to running over his arm. Uh, I don't think it was close as it looked the first time, but that could have been a problem right there. It'd break his wrist. It wouldn't have been any fault of Chad. He had nowhere to go. So Wyndham drops all the way back. He's got a lot of work ahead of him after that great start. Meanwhile, up front, Chad Reed, number 22. Ricky Carmichael, number four, one and two. Carmichael on the inside, and will he get him? Carmichael has the line, and he pulls it off. So Carmichael goes into first, and Chad Reed in second. That was just a better line by Carmichael right there. Chad was looking for a way to triple that and bring some of the Supercross element back into this outdoor stuff, but it's not working. Your running order, Carmichael and Reed and Ferry back after this. Annual Hangtown Classic, the AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championships. Todd Harris along with David Bailey and Cameron Steele. And your leader in moto number two is Ricky Carmichael. He got second in moto number one. Right behind him is number 22, Chad Reed, and the rest of the crew coming through. Kevin Windham got the whole shot. Looked like he was going to run away with this thing. David Bailey, not the case. Chad Reed got by him, and then Windham went down, and then Ricky Carmichael got by Chad Reed. That's where we are right now as Larry Ward sits in fourth place. Mike LaRocco sitting in fifth. I'm going to tip my hat right now a little bit to Larry Ward. He's putting together some pretty solid rides. Carmichael inching away from Chad Reed a little bit. I thought this would be an opportunity for Chad to keep pace with Ricky. Oh, no. Portelli, more bad luck. He got a flat tire in the second moto at round one at Glen Helen. Had to just pull out of the top 20. So separating that one and a three with a zero didn't really matter. Meanwhile, Kevin Windham has slid back to 14th place moments ago. Cameron Steele caught up with Kevin's mechanic. All right, from first in the first moto to outside the top ten, what happened so far in this moto? I think he just needs to relax just a little bit. You know, everything, you know, the big hype is over, you know, the streak's over. He needs to just relax and run his own race. Yeah, he got into the to the battle with Chad Reed right there, and, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. LaRocco doing the same thing right here to Larry Ward. Two great veterans, both of them on Hondas right now. LaRocco comes in tight, pushes Ward wide, and LaRocco moves up a position. That is the rock of old. Yeah, and that's, that's the same area where Kevin was trying to make his move. He just, that early lap, pushing real hard on a freshly watered track, you know, every once in a while you're gonna pay the price, and it's too bad Kevin went down, but he's still up and charging. I mean, it, that's what I really like about him, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's one thing to get the whole shot and get out there and, and lead a race wire to wire on a nice bike and all and, and motivated after not being out there for a while but to fall down and get back out there and still charge like he is that's what we need to see from Kevin is to keep him in our minds as far as a title contender you see the number 14 going up that's his plate number but it's also his position right now here in moto number two he is chasing that man Ricky Carmichael 88 career AMA wins a win today David and the tie is on with Jeremy McGrath well it's, it's looking like that's gonna happen as well Mike Gossler mm -hmm. looking pretty calm and cool about all of it and Ricky's pretty much been surrounded by Team Yamaha this whole season if Team Yamaha could be thinking you know if it weren't for that number four we'd be <laughs> sweeping everything but they just can't seem to find a little bit of edge to get around him. And, and uh, speaking of Team Yamaha, Billiman broke a radiator in that first moto, tipped over in a rut, and he had to pull out and lined up 37th to the gate this time. So he got a lousy start. He's working his way through the pack. We'll be back to see if Ricky Carmichael can hold off the rest of the pack after this. Everybody's riding and training together, and it's such a great sport, and it's good to do it on a Suzuki. The first thing I had was a JR80, and man, ever since I've been hooked to the brand. Just trying to have fun with it at first, and uh, if you like it that much, just keep working at it, and eventually you'll get up here. The DRZ line's so awesome. 
just like my bike, they're so fast, so easy to get used to. Such a variety to pick from. The whole family can go and get something they love. Suzuki definitely has the right dirt bike for you. The new Silverado is here. Now with quadra steer, four wheel steering. It's the most maneuverable full size pickup you can get. Silverado, the truck from Chevy. Get in the zone. Auto zone. If you're driving around with worn out brake pads, that's dangerous. Get to AutoZone for a new set of brakes today. Get in the zone. AutoZone. You've seen the movie. You're gonna cheat like me, and you're gonna spit nails. But you've never seen Rocky like this. Part of Real Classics, the movie, and the behind-the-scenes look. The rare home movies of the making of Rocky. 8 Eastern Sunday on ESPN Classic. Live, unscripted, intense, the NBA Finals. Tim Duncan, two-time MVP, versus Jason Kidd, franchise savior. Next, Spurs, game one, Wednesday night at 8 Eastern on ABC, and Sports Center after the game. We got hoops. The AMA U.S. Motocross Championships have been brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycle scooters and all-terrain vehicles. By Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Back to Northern California in the 35th Annual Hangtown Classic. Todd Harris along with David Bailey, Cameron Steele as the battle rages on, and Kevin Windham is moving on up. Gets around Raynard right there. That's the same corner where he's trying to pass Chad Reed back for the lead. That time it works. Still using that same line from the first moto, doubling or tripling into that corner, going straight to the outside berm to get a run at that little staircase going back up. Raynard right here. Just, it just doesn't look like he's in his flow yet. You know, when he's on, he's like Wyndham. He, he can just go wire to wire and win a moto and have everybody like, wow, man, Raynard's on fire. Speaking of on fire, look at this gap that Carmichael's already put on Reed. That surprised me. I thought Reed would be able to hang a little closer than that. Well, it's a fast second moto here as we are on the final lap. Timmy Ferry having another great showing on board the Yamaha number 15. Red Dog sitting in third place just behind teammate Chad Reed who sits in second and they're all chasing that man. Number four, Ricky Carmichael. The streak was broken in moto number one. Carmichael trying to start yet another one. A dangerous individual when he has motivation, David. Now just look how fast he is. I mean, just he just looks fast. If you freeze frame right there, it looks fast. Take a picture of it, it looks fast. And he's going fast. It's no surprise, really, when you watch him a little bit, that he is pulling away as much as he has from Chad Reed. I just thought Chad would be able to match it a little bit better. He'll get there. I'm confident that Chad's going to make a race of this the way Kevin was doing a little bit. Oh, a little swap there. Just lands right into the line he wants, though. So, yeah, a little, little minor miscue on uh, Ricky's part of the first moto, not getting the start he wanted, not getting going quick enough. But, and I man. think this is a huge motivational boost, not only that, but confidence-wise. You know, Chad Reed kind of had his way with him the last six stops in the Supercross, and here's Ricky comes back and passes him in a race in the Outdoor National, so that's got to feel good. Confidence sky high, and it looks like he's going to pick up another victory and start another streak. Yeah, I think he's uh, the, the rivalry, or whatever you want to call it, between he and Wyndham right now, Wyndham stopping the streak. I think that's a bit friendlier because of the Honda teammate thing. With Chad, it's more of a, an ego deal, and hey, man, you, you don't <laughs> own me anymore. Well, so much was made of the streak coming to an end, but remember, 16 consecutive overall victories, and that takes into a grand total of 89 total, David, tying the great Jeremy McGrath. Well, you can see he's pretty pumped about getting that second moto win. This time, he's he, he knows exactly where to go. I'm going to do my parade <laughs> lap, wave to the fans. He's not like, okay, I have to go back to the truck now. I didn't win. But he's, he's pretty pumped to, to keep that overall streak intact. And he's going to have to be happy with those this year because Chad, like I, I keep saying, I think he's going to get it figured out at some point. You know, uh, Lusk is starting off slow. Ferry, these guys are all capable of knocking Ricky off that top spot. We've already, we already know Kevin can. 
That's not going to be the last time. So Ricky Carmichael gets a win in moto number two. Meanwhile, Kevin Windham still on the track will come through. Disappointment for him because he made the pass on Chad Reed. Unfortunately, went down in a very critical situation. Early laps, and the field just went by him. He rebounded good, though, for a sixth, fourth overall. But judging from his body language there, he's, he's still not satisfied. No question about that. Right now, let's check in with Cameron Steele, who is with our overall winner. Well, the moto streak doesn't leave here intact, but the overall moto victories, that's all that seems to matter right now. Overall in the day, going to Ricky Carmichael, last year's champion. And Ricky, does it seem like a weight might have been lifted a little bit by not having to try to win every single moto this year? Uh, not really. You know, Cameron, I, uh, I haven't been worrying too much about the streak. You know, what happened last year is done, and uh, this is a new year. So, you know, we're ready. This is a new chapter, and we're tr out here to try to win some races, and that's what we did today. The... Uh, you know, I had a good time all day, even though I didn't win the first moto. It was fun for me, and it was a challenge. Looking forward to going back east, you know. Uh, been out here since Salt Lake, and uh, looking forward to going home, definitely. It seems like the last barrier in, in a record, but right now you tie Jeremy McGrath, 89 overall AMA wins. That's got to be a pretty proud moment for you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's awesome to be uh, tied with a guy like uh, Jeremy McGrath, and uh, I'm looking... Uh, Looking forward to, uh, you know, trying to get some more wins and uh, being the all-time winningest rider of AMA history. Well, it seems like it might be a fair bet that's going to happen. Well, great job today, Ricky. It's fun watching your ride. Thanks a lot. And, uh, you know, thanks to all my fans, everyone. Thank you. Well, a great day for Ricky Carmichael as he picks up 89th, the 89th, and that was a big one indeed as we take a look at our Honda official results. It's Carmichael, Reed, Ferry, Mike LaRocco, and Larry Ward, the top five. A great day also for Kevin Windham. He gets a sixth-place finish, and as David said, a great rebound for him. Right now, let's send it back down to Cameron Steele, who is with Chad Reed. Well, Chad, if I had to guess, I'd say you weren't very happy with fourth place in the first moto. Wanted to make up a bit for it in the second. Yeah, the first moto, I just, I felt terrible. The bike was just totally working against me, and I just, uh, you know, I couldn't do anything. I just had to ride around and get, you know, the best points I can. The other guys up front were just running a good pace, and, you know, I just couldn't, couldn't run that pace on the bike. And, uh, you know, we made a lot of changes for the second moto, and it was, it was a little better. And, uh, you know, we make some more next week, and. Hopefully we can uh, get up there on the number one spot. Great job today, Chad. We'll see you next week. So a great run for the Australian Chad Reed. The number 22 bike sits in a second position overall. And his teammate, Tim Ferry, once again on the podium, claiming third overall. Well, Red Dog, a pair of third place today. Give you a third overall. You happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy. Uh, you know, I wanted to get on the podium, you know, at the beginning of the year, the first three races before the break. And... Uh, that's, that's what I've done, you know. Two-thirds in a row, so I'm pretty happy. A great run for Tim Ferry and Team Yamaha as we take a look at the point standings right there. It's Carmichael, Reed, Ferry, and Kevin Windham sitting in fourth place after what could have been a disastrous fall. Well, Kevin, a great first race, but the second moto seemed to come apart on you. What happened out there? Well, uh, I got a little bit aggressive there the first lap. I got the whole shot, and uh, Reed jumped up there and uh, made the pass on me. And uh, I actually made a pass back on them, but it was coming into a corner where they had watered a lot, not for, for who knows what, what reason, but it was pretty wet. And uh, just a little too much aggression, aggression early in the, in the race, and uh, I went down, wound up going down again, which uh, you know, those guys up front, man, once, once they get rolling, there's no way you can catch them laying on the ground. From that point on, I just tried to truck it along and uh, wound up getting to, a, I think, a six, which I felt was halfway respectable considering the top four. I definitely checked out. Right on, Kevin. Great job. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. No problem. My pleasure. Thanks. Well, a great day of racing here at Hangtown, the 35th annual Hangtown Classic. On behalf of Cameron Steele and the champ, David Bailey.